here we go. So we're working on the Ford GPA Jeep by Tamiya, 135th scale. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've done. I've applied the lights here. I've added the front suspension and parts B23 on the ends here. I've added the rear suspension, parts B22. And I had to clean these up quite a bit. There's quite a bit of flash on them. And there were also pin marks on the bottom of them, but I realized that many of those would not be seen, so I did not take the time to clean them up. Um, I'm a stickler for pin marks. If I can see a pin mark, I will clean it up. And also there were some seams here from a little bit of flash. So I removed some of that. Also found flash along the end here and removed that as well. You can see in some of the scratch marks, which I'll bring these scratch marks down a little bit more and then the whole vehicle will be primed. So the scratch marks will go away. Speaking of priming, I broke piece B21 down, or B19 down here. Let me use the tweezers to show you. This one here. So I made a new one out of brass and aluminum and cut the aluminum tubing piece with the K&S uh, tubing cutter, which worked with pretty well. And replaced a part here and then um, primed it all because uh, if I were to just apply paint to brass or aluminum, it would not adhere well. And if I were to touch it, especially with a piece of metal like a tweezer, um, that paint would just come right off. So before I went any further into the construction of the piece, I went ahead and just primed them ahead of time. All right. Uh, it was a little bit of a process applying this piece along with the, um, the part here, which holds it in place. But once I figured it out, we were fine. Then I applied the rear uh, suspension finally saving these two smaller pieces, uh, more, more delicate pieces for the last step. Okay, and then this, um, this hook is here as well. And took a lot of time on each of these. As you can see, they're all surfaces have been sanded down and thinned down a little bit, as well as just cleaned up some of the edges. The edges had um, flash from the manufacturing sort of all around them. Uh, I assume that in the later versions of this kit um, their molding process was better they use the same molds but they um, maybe the plastic was was different which is what we see a lot with these tamia kits we see this sort of older darker green and the newer ones will have a much much lighter green and that's just a different a different kind of plastic um, which i imagine prevents any of those sorts of uh, like little, they're like little lips that occur. Let me show, let me show you an example. In fact, I can see a little bit here. See on this piece, it has a little bit of a lip, and that's not done on purpose. That's just from the process. So, what I'll do in this case is I'll bring it down a little bit, and you can see it as I scrape along. It starts to show up even more. You see how much of a ridge is actually there, and as I bring it down that lighter color goes away. And this is what we don't get in newer Tamiya kits, but certainly the older ones we do. Um, I did get this kit for a very low price, and when I purchased it, I didn't realize that there were newer versions of it. I hadn't done the proper research. It was actually kind of an impulse buy and a purchase I thought needed to happen immediately in order for me to get it. Um, so that's all right. Sometimes we make little errors like this and either we learn from them or we make the best that we have. And I think this kit's actually going to work out just fine despite these little flaws because I do know how to take care of them. All right. Really anybody can build any kit. It's just a matter of having the skills and the patience to, to do it well. There, I will tell you that there was one example there was a, the Tamiya, or the Italeri um, kit, the M107, which I may show in a video at some point because um, I haven't completed it yet. But there are two versions. Tamiya bought the rights to the molds, and the original Italeri um, molding is terrible. There was short shot everywhere. There was flash everywhere. And in the new Tamiya kit, much better. So actually, it was a situation where I had that Italeri kit 
in my stash. I probably got it for like ten, fifteen dollars at a raffle at a, at a contest years and years ago, because I always I had always wanted to build it. And then Timmy re released a new one several years later, and uh, I went ahead and purchased that. The price was fifty dollar range, but I, to me it was well worth getting that kit in a newer, newer um, molding. All right. So that's what I've done so far. Uh, I did want to show you the process as I was doing it. I'll typically do that in my videos, but this time I accidentally, well, I filmed it in portrait. So was not able to salvage that video. It would have been about 15 minutes or so of me working through this and talking through it, but all right, it's a learning process. It's something I always have to make sure I'm doing correctly. So landscape, always film the landscape. All right. Uh, thanks for joining and hope you enjoy the video and see you at the next one. Bye.